Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to play a camera shake when your AI is walking near the player. So this is going to give a nice effect of a big kind of monster or a big character stomping by with a nice camera shake. And I've also added a sound effect in as well, which I'll show you how to do too. So let me hit play and show you what it is that we're going to make today. So you can see we're going to have our AI walking in front of us here. And as it's close enough, you can see the camera is shaking ever so slightly. And we have that sound effect as well. And as it walks away, further away from the player, we're not going to have the sound effects or the camera shake. Now, the camera shake is quite subtle. It's not massive. I've done that intentionally and on purpose. Anything more than this, I thought looked a little bit too excessive. But I'm going to be going over and showing you how to actually fully customize it. So you can actually have a larger and more prominent camera shake if that is what you are after for your game. So this is what we're going over today. Again, setting up so that whenever you are in a close enough vicinity to this AI, it is going to be having these camera shakes. And as you can see there, it is also only when it is walking. It's just not when you're near it. It's just when it's walking like this. You can do it for walking, running, jumping. So when it lands, anything along those lines is very easy to customize. And it's incredibly modular. So again, this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to actually set up our camera shake blueprints. So to do this, we're going to hit control space to open up the content browser, right click, go to blueprint class. Then we're going to open up the all classes drop down menu here and search for camera shake. You see, we have a few different ones here. The one we want though is the legacy camera shake right at the bottom down here. We're going to hit select. And then I'm going to name this CS for camera shake underscore enemy walking. But you can name this whatever makes the most sense for you. And we're going to open this up straight away. Now in here, this is how you actually customize and create the camera shake itself. So what it's going to look like, how intense it is, how long it lasts and all that good stuff. I'm just going to be inputting the values which I used at the beginning of the video. And these are just ones which I found through messing about to see what works best for me for the effect which I want. But again, incredibly easy to just play about with these and have a look to see what it looks like. So what you're going to want to do to test them out is set up the whole video first so you can see the camera shake in action. Once you've then got it set up, you can come back in here and then modify these values. But the values which I used are for the oscillation duration, which is just how long the camera shake is going to last. I did 0.2, so that is 0.2 seconds. Then the blend in time and blend out time is exactly what you think and I left those at the default value of 0.1 and 0.2. Then you have rot oscillation, lock oscillation and FOV oscillation. Now this is the rotation, location and field of view. I only did the rotation and location, I didn't bother with the field of view. And we can open up rotation first. I didn't do the pitch or your, I just did the roll. What I did in here was the amplitude, which is essentially the severity of it or the intensity. I set this to two. Then the frequency is how many times it's going to happen over the course of the duration of the entire camera shake. I set this at 50. So we're going to have the camera shake roll 50 times with intensity of two over 0.2 seconds. You can then set the initial offset to either be random or zero. I like to keep it at random and the waveform you can change to be sine wave or purlin noise. So obviously if you know a lot about kind of wave formations and camera shakes this is a lot easier for you to customize how you want but this is also very easy just to play about trial and error see what works best for you so again that's all i did for the rotation then the location i did do x y and z but i just did the same values for all of them and what i did for the roll so the amplitude i set to 2 and the frequency i set to 50. initial offset random waveform sine wave and i did the same for all of these like so just for simplicity for the tutorial and I think it still looks pretty good. Now again, if you're not happy with this, you can modify these to make it more intense by increasing the amplitude or increasing the frequency. You can even make it last longer, but I think for footsteps, I don't want it to last too long. But again, it's very easy to just modify these values to get the desired effect you're after. But this is what I'm going with. So once this is set up, we can compile, save and close it. And that is now our camera shake set up. What we need to do now is be able to trigger it. So what we're going to do to trigger it is we're going to be using animation notifies. And this is because I'm doing this for when the AI is walking, but you can do it for walking, running, landing from a jump, any other kind of animation. We can also just do this via a blueprint as well if you want. So for example, if you don't want it to be when the AI is walking, you want it to be when you interact with something or you blow something up, 
that's very easy just the code i've done take it out of the animal try and place it somewhere else in a blueprint but let's get right into it so what we're going to do is hit control space again to open up our content browser right click go to blueprint class open the drop down menu of all classes again and we're going to search for anim notify as we want to create our own custom one that we can use across any animation blueprint without having to create it for all of them so this just is a lot more modular and a lot more dynamic and future proofed for an entire game with multiple different characters using multiple animation blueprints so we'll select this one i'm then going to call this one an for animation notify underscore and i'll name it enemy walking camera shake as that makes the most sense for me or you could just call it camera shake again it's whatever you want i'm then going to open this up straight away and in here what we want to do is up at the top left we have functions you see it says three overridable we want to hover over it and press override and then override received notify here so essentially when our animation notify is notified in our animation this event is going to fire off and in here this is where we just want to play our camera shake so we're going to come out of mesh component or mesh comp and we're going to get owner this top one up here and out of this we're going to get actor location and this is because we want to make sure the camera shake is playing where this ai is and then to do the actual camera shake we can come out of the event and then play world camera shake nice and simple like so setting the epicenter to the location there and the shake to the one we just created which for me is cs enemy walking then we have some settings in here as well so the inner radius is essentially if you are inside that radius the camera shake will not play it won't affect cameras in this radius so for me i'm going to set that to zero if you're close enough i want it to always shake the outer radius is what i want to mess about with as that is essentially anything within that radius that isn't in the inner radius is going to play our camera shake so if we hover over it you'll see it says cameras outside of inner radius and inside this are affected so the values i were using at the beginning of the video were 750 i thought that wasn't too big wasn't too small it was just right then the fall off is affects the fall off of effect as it nears the outer radius i had this at 1.5 but you can set that to absolutely whatever you like but again these are values i used at the beginning of the video you can also take orient shake towards epicenter if you wanted as well i didn't want that as i didn't think it was necessary for this effect but you can do that if you want and that is that set up one final thing i'm going to do though is just add in a nice sound effect in here as well i may as well do this in here but you could do this as a separate notify as well if you wanted to but what i'm going to do is simply just play sound at location connecting this location into the get actor location we've already used here as well i'm going to double click these to get some root nodes keep it nice and organized the sound i'm going to set to a sound cue i've already created which i've called sf stomp q and then what i'm also going to do is open up this change the volume multiplier to 0.5 and then the pitch multiplier i'm going to do random float in range with the minimum being 0.8 and the maximum being 1.2 so sorry if i've kind of gone through that bit a little bit quickly that's because the sound effect isn't really part of this video i'm just doing it in here as well the reason why i've got the pitch multiplier as a random number is just so it keeps it nice and unique as the sound effects i've got is let me open up the sound cue actually just to show you it is basically just two different sound effects which sound very very similar i'll play them now so you see they are slightly different but very similar so i just want to exaggerate that effect of them being different so it doesn't sound too repetitive as the ai is walking so that's why i've got the random pitch there and the volume multiplier obviously just to make it quieter once you've done all this you're going to want to tick the return value in the return node compile and save and that is now all set up as well what we need to do now is call this anim notify so we can close all of this and then we're going to open up the animations which we want to play the the camera shake in so for me that's going to be just our walking so i'm going to open up my content browser go to content characters mannequins animations manny and i just want m m walk forward we can obviously do this for walk forward walk in place jump land running anything that you want but for me it's just walk forward for the purpose of this video and you can see as well that you might not have this if you've got your own custom animations but for me we already have some notifies in here 
I'm not using those. So what I'm going to do is I, you can use this track if you want, but I'm going to create a new track. So you see notifies, I'm then going to click on track, insert notify track. I'm just going to pause this. Now me having these other notifies here does make this a lot easier for me, but I'm still going to go over showing you how to do it. So what we're going to do is want to get a side profile of our character, and then we're just going to skim through the timeline to see when the character and the, the animation puts its foot on the ground. So you can see it's kind of about there. See now their animation is here. So their notify is here, but I might actually put it further over here. So once you've then got it in the location you want the camera shake and the sound effect to play at, we can right click on our notify track, add notify, and then you should see we have the one we created, which for me was AN enemy walking camera shake. So we'll add that in there. And now every time this animation goes to this certain point, it's gonna call this event, which is gonna fire off our camera shake. And we're gonna to want to do this for everywhere where the foot lands. So I'll keep going forward again, and then the foot lands there again. So I'll right click, anim notify, and then our anim notify. What you can also do is select it and hit control C to copy it. Then move the animation to the next point, which I think is there for me. Select the notify track and hit control V to paste it at that location. And we'll just do this for all of the footsteps that we have in our animation. So every single time you want the track, the camera shake to play, you're going to want to do this here. So I think there's one more probably. Yeah, there it is. And there we go. That is it for me. So now if we go through every single time it hits this, which you can see is happening here, it's going to be playing our camera shake in game. And that is now it fully set up. So we can save this and close it and let's hit play to test it. And one thing to keep in mind is it does it based on the camera. So it's not where the player character is, it's where the camera is. So if your camera isn't in the radius where your character is, it's not gonna work. So for me, that's why I'm in first person as it really does help sell the effect a lot more. So again, let's hit play and test this out. So we can see our AI coming forward here. We're gonna have that camera shake and have that sound effect as it is walking past and by the player and it's gonna fade out both the sound effect and the camera shake and as it's further away, even though it's still walking, it's not close enough to us, so we're not getting the effect. If we to go back over closer to it again, when it turns around and walks past, we're gonna have a camera shake with the sound effect as he's walking past, and if we to keep up with him, we're still gonna have that camera shake and the sound effect as well, but again, as it goes past me, he's gonna fade out with those effects. And also, if I had to go over to him when he's over here, not walking, we're not gonna get the effects happening. So this is working perfectly for us. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we've wanted to do, what we've done is we've set up a system in which we have a camera shake playing and also a sound effect, but when the AI is walking and only walking past the players, they have to be within a certain radius and has to be playing a certain animation to get this effect to play. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it and I hope you did find it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.